verse 12, Matthew 5 says, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say, say all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice. That's exactly what's happened in this text. So Jesus said, rejoice in that day for great is your reward in heaven. That's Hebrews 10, 34 in the mouth of Jesus 30, 40 years earlier. So one of my assumptions that's got to go is when I have light shining in and I begin to let light shine out, things are going to go well. Got to get rid of that. Sometimes they go well and sometimes they go badly. Both texts are there, right? They will see your good works and they'll give glory to your father. Many people are moved by the good works of Christians. Amen? Let it be. And many people hate the good works of Christians because of its roots and its branches and all of its implications for their lives. So the answer, what happens in the early church in Hebrews when you get enlightened, that is when you get saved, is that suffering often comes. If they call the master of the house Beelzebul, that's a name for the devil, Jesus said, how much more will they malign those of his house? Much more likely that you would get maligned if Jesus got maligned, and he did, he got crucified. Paul said in 1 Timothy 3, 12, all who desire to live a godly life in Atlanta will be persecuted except in Atlanta, where everybody's godly. No, this city is not a surprise to Paul, nor America, nor the 21st century. He said that. If, if there is no person finding your faith troubling, it's probably not showing very well. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, Jesus said. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Think it not strange, brothers, when the fiery ordeal comes upon you to test you. First Peter 4. We do think it's strange. That's a word for America. We think it's strange. <laughs> if a fiery ordeal comes upon you to test you because you have stood for Christ and his truth, we say, something's wrong. I must have done it wrong. And the Bible is trying to help us wake up from this distortion and say, not necessarily. I mean, you might have been a jerk, but you also might have been faithful. So when they were enlightened here, how did they suffer? How did they suffer? Verse 33, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison. Verse 34. So they get two groups of people, right? You see those two groups of people? Some, because of their words or deeds or attitudes, don't know what it was, they suffered reproach, they suffered affliction, and they went to jail. And then you have another group of people who watch that happen, and they have to decide, do we identify or not? Do we tell people, I'm, I'm one of them? Or just keep quiet. Don't, I'm not one of them. These folks, those are the two people. Sometimes being exposed to reproach and affliction and sometimes being partners, sharers with those so treated. So you're in jail here and you're identifying here. What happened to those who identified? Verse 34. 
you had compassion on those in prison and accepted joyfully, you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property. 